Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to another wonderful episode of 15 Minutes of Fame. Tonight's guest, we have the one and only Miss Lisa Arringdell of New York, Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn. Brooklyn's in the house. How are you, my sister? Oh, I'm so well and so thankful to be invited onto your show, Dawn. People don't know. I'm sure you'll tell them, but I'm just going to say it. There is something very special when you get to sit with the people that knew you when you were a child. Yes. It's, it's really amazing. It's one of the reasons I love my brothers so much. And um, I'm loving just sitting here with you, Dawn, because you saw me then. I saw you then. Yes. And I see you now. And you are just gloriously beautiful. Thank and I'm um and I'm just so thankful. I'm so thankful. <laughs> you, Lisa, I can't audience members, you have no idea the the way she is now, like open like this. She was like this then. And I have some stories that I'm gonna share. You oh, might okay. Remember. But of course, they're just wonderful stories. And it's things that you've changed me in so many ways we have no idea. But we're going to get to that and you're going to crack up because, yeah, you're amazing. So <laughs> everyone, we have Lisa Arundel with us today. She's got accomplished actress, um, writer. She's done TV, film, Broadway, and probably other stuff that... I'm the, I will find out about when we do this interview. But the first thing I always ask my guests, who is? So the first question, who is Lisa Arundel? Oh, I, I received a thank you note from a dear, dear, dear friend the other day who has, as she said, well, the thank you note opened with, I am the daughter of Ooh. Guillermo Arundel and Daphne Todman. And I am the sister of Travis and William and Guillermo. And I am also mother and I am also friend. I, I speak to you in terms of relationship because what has always been clear to me in, in my life after, I guess, um, I guess uh, the early part of my career is that I don't measure my life in my work. I measure it in my relationships and the quality of my relationships. Well, sir. I, I, I said um, in an early interview, I do not want to be surrounded with, at the time, DVDs. When I am 80, I want to be surrounded with my family, my children and their children and their children's children. Uh, so uh, yes, I am daughter to Guillermo and Daphne and I'm so very grateful. <laughs> yes, beautiful. And, and daughter of the king of all kings. Yes. So I'll just put that he he's in and through and all around and there I, I am I say this all the time I am dust and so grateful to be his dust yes Ooh, well what a what opening that is audience you have no idea we opened up in prayer and Lisa had me like in tears she's amazing um your parents were they in the arts at all? Were they educators? Like, who were your parents and how did they raise you in, to be such a phenomenal woman like you are? So my, my, uh, my parents are um, immigrants. Yay for the immigrants. Where did you, where, where? Um, my dad uh, was born in the Dominican Republic. My mother was born in Aruba. And they immigrated to the country uh, when they were teenagers. I, they're both in the field of um, finances, money. My dad is an accountant, CPA. Okay. My mom was an actuary. 
she though did that purely to raise and care for her family. She had no interest at all in it, though she was very good at it. Mm -hmm. She is, I, people say, how'd you get your start? And I say always, my mother is a theater. She is like, she, everything is just big and fabulous and wonderful. Mm -hmm. When she walks into the room, it's, there's a, That's it's a you. party. <laughs> oh, really? Me? My mother's the dancer on the floor. She's got a, she's the one that's always <laughs> dancing. Uh, people, she will actually say, people say, Daphne, dance. Oh. Because when I start, you know, she's just very, yes. um, and so, and, and she was not permitted to be that part of herself growing up. Uh, okay. She grew up in a very religious home. So consequently, she responded to that restriction in her parenting by exposing myself and my brothers mm -hmm. to all the arts she could. Okay. So we were taking painting classes at the museum, at, at, you know, at the Brooklyn Museum when we were kids. We were taking dance classes. I started taking dance classes and this beautiful woman, uh, her name was Miss Christian. She had a little dance school um, uh, in her basement. Okay. Um, and, and I eventually ended up at Ailey, but I started yeah. in a little basement of a, a dancer who wanted the neighborhood kids to know how to dance. Um, and so my mom was always that mom sitting there in the classroom watching Right. how I did everything, telling me how I needed to do it differently. Um, and then I had the opportunity to go to Meyer Levin Junior High School in Brooklyn. And they had a wonderful performing arts program. And the English teachers that ran it, it's always the English teachers, isn't it? They, they, always, <laughs> so funny. they just need us to know about the arts. Mm -hmm. I guess, you know, they're teaching us so yes. much literature. Yes. So those teachers... Oh, <laughs> it's funny. I was thinking about him as I said that. I Dr. Reich. Yes. Uh, Shout out to Dr. Reich. I just, I, I loved Dr. Reich and st still things that he taught me now. Mm -hmm. I, I, I do not, I do not read, I do not write. I do not submit writing without reading it out loud. We were in the same class. I know. Yes, it. right? I know it. Because none of this software, 30 years later, none of this software can tell you what reading out loud, right? Will you, yep. right? They can correct a lot of things, but they cannot correct certain things. Yep. And Mr., you know, yes, Mr. Reich was, uh, Dr. Reich was wonderful that way. He was wonderful and, and an artist, I'm sure, in, right. his, in, in, in his heart. So I wanna get into that too, with your drama and Shakespeare and, and the theater and literature and all of that, because there's a whole nother language at such a young age, Lisa. Like, okay, ninth grade, I guess, what are we, 14? Like, I don't even know how old that is. And you guys, Shakespeare, right away. Talk about that whole process in the drama department of the performing arts. So, uh... I, my very first Shakespeare was in a summer camp program. Again, um, I, had, I wasn't at performing arts yet, wow. but a young lady who was at performing arts was hired as a camp counselor and she taught us, she put on a production, which when I think about it now, wow. And she was 16. So to me, she was a grown up. Hi. I just, she was just big. Yeah. Um, and I think I was 12, 11, 11, 10, 11. Like I played to Tanya in, um, in uh, Midsummer Night's Dream. So that was my first exposure to Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand uh, the, the, what necessarily was happening in the play, mm -hmm. but I really understood what I felt being in a group of people working together towards a goal. Yeah. I loved that feeling. Yeah. I mean, I just, I loved it. And, and to listen to a, di a director, the 16 year old girl uh, tell us you have to do this and be here and stop there and with feeling, you know, <laughs> do it with feeling. Um, 
it was just very exciting to me. And she went to performing arts. So when I heard that, Ooh. I thought, oh, I want to go where she's going. I see. Okay. Um, but I, I, I didn't really give that too much thought after that. It was at, uh, it was at Meyer Levin where the teacher in uh, eighth grade said at the beginning of the year to us after we'd finished the first production, like anything goes or something or, mm -hmm. or Annie, we used to do full scale mm -hmm. productions, musicals. And he, he pulled me aside and said, Lisa, you should go to the fame school. And fame had come out that year, I think, mm -hmm. or close to it. Yeah. And, it came out and, like I, summer before. and I said to him, you, I, I said, I said, that's a real place. Cause I, I'd seen the movie. I said, that's a real place. And he said, yes. And everybody, I, you're I, like, I'm Dawn, it was like the movie, wasn't it? It was like the movie. I, I don't know what the kids at LaGuardia are experiencing. Although, you know, we went back for the our anniversary mm -hmm. and it was lovely. Yeah. But we were in that little building that's in the movie. Yeah. And it was like that movie. Like, I, I can't say we, I can't say I went to the school and was like, ah, uh, this wasn't like the movie. No, it was like the movie. <laughs> It was so. Uh, so can powerful. you give an example? Yes. About the drama department and how it was like the movie. So, okay, it was nothing, guys, to be in the hallway and pass someone who is a musician and they have their trumpet and they can play it as loud as they want. I don't know why they had permission to do that. And then walk a few feet and you see Lisa with her book, her reading her lines with her friend in a wig, or, you know, just something totally odd. And then you go a few feet, you see a ballerina on, I mean, and everyone gave everyone their own, their own space, their own privacy. We respected each other. And it was just a community of individuals with, like you talked about, with a purpose, a goal. We yeah. knew the difference. Yes. And we knew, like, I'm going to cry. We had to come to this house. Yes. To be fed. Yes. So yes. that we can oh. go out and feed others. So that's, that's, that's pretty much what it is. That yes. And we didn't know that that's what we were being prepared for. Yes. And I, as you say it, I'm thinking that is exactly right. And everyone, if you can imagine, in our building, people lived in their work clothes. So you would see the dancers all day long in their dance clothes. The, like the actors, we all always wore black. Yep. We all walked around in these clothes and we all were employed. Oh, the dancers, the musicians. I'm the not actors. employed. Tell me how I was employed. Right? I me mean, I, I'm just saying, we, so we, what we, what they can't prepare you for in the world of what Dawn and I do mm -hmm. is that you're going to a world where you'll be waiting to be employed. Yes. And that that's the hard part of what we do. Yeah. Almost the easy part of what we do is the arts. Yes. It's the stuff around getting the job that's the hard part. Yes. But at performing arts, mm -hmm. we were all that's employed. Cool. Yes. And so we were always engaged in how can I get better? Yeah. And I didn't even think about it until now that, yes. that it was a rich environment because you had artists mm -hmm. who were doing what they needed to do. Dude. who had an audience, who had instructors, who had a reflection of their art always um, coming back at them, mm -hmm. right? So it was very rigorous, yeah. but, it, but you felt like you had purpose. Mm -hmm. In the world, you have amazing artists who are often without a reflection of their work coming back to them who often give up because they are discouraged because no one is giving them feedback mm -hmm. about the art that is within them, the mm -hmm. art that they are producing. They really do, they feel like they're doing it in a vacuum and that can be discouraging. 
That's a good point because I never really thought of it that way because in dance, in order to make it into the school, you would have already have had to have some type of a training, right? So you're getting feedback. But in the world of drama and arts and theater, not everyone has taken your walk. They don't have that training. So they'll go in, oh, I just want to be on TV. And they go to audition and it's a rude awakening when they're like, I didn't get feedback. Nobody told me I'd had to, right? Let's talk about that. Because there are a lot, a lot of my audience are younger kids going into college and still trying to figure out what it is they want to do. Talk about the training and what's really, really required to maintain uh, your, your work. Okay, so for the young people, I say the reason you want to go and train as an actor, but I believe training as an artist, any type of artist is important. Yep. Um, and we know musicians don't even say they're musicians unless they've been trained. Right. It's a rare musician that's trained themselves. It's possible. But Shout it's out rare. to Stevie Wonder. Today's his birthday. Shout out to Stevie Wonder. <laughs> I think, right? I think, uh, Rach Charles. But again, right? Necessity is the mother of invention. If you don't have anybody yes. and God has put it in you, it's going to come out. Yeah. Uh, so I was about to say one thing and I. I it, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, I, no, 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 no. Um, uh, you, you want to go and, and receive training if it's at all possible. And when I say possible, I mean, if you can get to the place to audition. Mm -hmm. I, I highly recommend, do not think about how it's going to get paid for. Mm -hmm. Let me say it again. Mm -hmm. and, and some people might think that I'm foolish. Don't think about how it's going to get paid for. Think about, is this the thing that is inside me that I have to do? That I cannot live well, joyfully, happily with, with can, I, I need it almost to breathe. Yeah. Uh, I did not want to, I, I, if I did, if my teacher didn't say you should audition for the fame school, I don't know if I would have found out about the fame school, but I knew I needed him to point me in that direction. And, and then in that school, I had a teacher in my senior year who had been my teacher for two or three years say to me, you must go to Juilliard. That was his, you must. And I had no desire or intention of going to Juilliard, none. Because going to Juilliard for me meant I would have to live at home with my mama. Okay. And for me, the whole reason to go to college was I was ready to move out of my house, my mother's house. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to go and sleep in dorm, a dorm and have like a college campus life. That was my mm -hmm. thinking. Mm -hmm. But this teacher was adamant and I'm so grateful he was, so grateful. But I knew so little about what it took to pay for school that I didn't know that my mother didn't have the money to mm. send me to college. I didn't know. And I praise God that she never said, baby, I don't have any money to send you to school. She didn't say a word. So when I was accepted to Juilliard, and they said, oh, it costs this much per year. Mm -hmm. And we're going to pay for you to go. Huh? Like I did not, I didn't, what? What? You're gonna what? Yes, we're gonna pay for you to go. You will have to pay for transportation and food. Oh, and I was like, well, I've been had a job since I was, as soon as I could get my working papers. Mm -hmm. So I, I will just keep working. I will work on the weekends, right? Because Juilliard is 12 hours a day, five days a week. Okay. So I just had my job on the weekends and that paid for my, at the time, tokens. You had to pay for, buy tokens for the train. Mm -hmm. And, and that 
paid for me to eat food. My my side gig, my weekend gig paid I for me. I did not know you had the full scholarship. That is amazing. Can yes. We talk about, what was your audition process for Juilliard? What oh, okay. Well, I'm going to say that the, the process has changed. Thank God. So I auditioned and what, what it was then is you go into the building at Lincoln Center uh, on a Saturday morning, you get a number. I, re- I think my number was number 86. Why do you um, remember that? It's so strange. Like, well, I just remember there were so many people and the paper that, that was pinned on my shirt was in the 80s. I just remember like, mm-hmm. this is, there are so many people. Right. And I was, again, I'm so grateful, ignorant that this was not the only weekend for auditions. Okay. This was not the only location for the auditions. There were locations for auditions in Chicago. They went to San Francisco and Los Angeles to audition. I mean, they auditioned and people came from all over the world to those three locations to get at the time. 25 spots oh my lord so you know well over a thousand people at that time I have no idea I don't know if 1700 auditioned the year that I have no idea but I know it is a ridiculous amount and what they said was we allow up to 25 if we find 25 So they had no obligation to fill the 25 spaces and they usually did not. Um, You did your first audition. Then after they finished in the morning, four or five hours, then they would put up the callback list. You'd go to see if your name was on the list. If your name was one of the few names on the list, you had to come back later in the afternoon to do your second audition. Um, for for everybody on all of the panels that they had, you know, they had different rooms, but then all of those auditioners uh, would they would they would combine the panel okay. uh, to one panel of auditioners, and then all of them collectively would see the callbacks. Now, do you remember what you presented them? I do, I do. Okay, I do. Okay. You can tell us. <laughs> well, because I laugh now, because now I'm I I I not only am I I'm an actor, but I'm a teacher, and so I I and 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 just so you know, I was a year younger than everybody, Dawn, because I, I remember that you I and, yes I remember I, I had skipped uh, kindergarten. Yes. They they skipped me out of kindergarten, so I was sixteen auditioning for Juilliard and I finished my first audition my first piece and the man uh Michael Kahn very famous teacher and artistic director of the Shakespeare of of the Shakespeare theater in DC and I think now he's retired which I I'm sure he's Mm -hmm. directing somewhere else um but he was at the Folger and at the Shakespeare in DC he said, so what does a 16 year old think she can do at Juilliard? And I said, well, I heard that this is the best school in the country for acting and I want to be a great actress. And he said, without, he didn't laugh at all, Don. Right, right. Nobody laughed, right. nobody. I think I would have laughed. No, you didn't seen the greatness in that student with the confidence that we're going to talk about after this. There's nothing funny about that. I, I mean, I, he did not. He was straight face. Oh, all right. What, what's the next piece you have for us? And my first piece that I had done, I did Lady Macbeth. Did you? I did Lady Macbeth at 16. You prepared for that. Yes. You prepared for that. I, will, I, I said... Uh, 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 um, uh, I, uh, I have given suck and know oh. how tender it is to love the baby. I was laughing at that. And that was it. <laughs> yes. PG show, PG show. Yes, I was doing the Shakespeare, honey, at 16. Yes. I would have plucked 
my nipple from its boneless gums. PG show, PG show. Yes, I was, I was working at it at 16. And then I did another piece um, from a play called The Watering Place. And I did those two pieces. And they I called, up in a I called Mr. Yusin mm -hmm. um, in the middle, right? So I called Mr. Yusin after I'd seen my name on the callback list. And, and they- This is your the teacher at high school. school. Huh? huh? Teacher in high school, Mr. Yusin. Yes, Mr. Yusin was my high school drama teacher. Mm -hmm. Uh, from Russia. Oh, okay. He was Russian, little Russian man. So he was, you must go to Julia Glaza. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yes. And I was like, I don't want to go, Mr. Yusin. You must go. You must so go. I literally auditioned only to get him off my back. Wow. Just so I could say I auditioned, but I, I that's the only reason. But I called him in the middle when I had the dinner break before the callbacks. And I said, Mr. Yusim, I got a callback. Good, good, go back and you will do good, go back. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. And yeah, and I invited Mr. Yusim to see me when I was on Broadway, mm -hmm. as well as my other teachers from junior high school, I invited them oh to- Oh my Lord, you remember everyone, you reached out. I was like, you don't like when you're a, I'm a, I'm big on signposts. Okay. Because especially right for your, for your audience, for your young people. Mm -hmm. I think God gives us signposts. Okay. And you're going to explain that. I think, uh, I think, I think, I think there are signs like, like mile markers, you know, on your highway, it says mile 21. Yes. You know, if, in case you get lost and you have to call somebody on the highway and you yes. don't know, I'm on, I'm on 85 North. Yeah, where? Right. Uh, it says mile marker 33. Yes. Okay. I think he sends us signposts. And I think that there are those of us who yield to signposts mm -hmm. and pay attention. And I think that there are those of us who are not paying attention to the signposts or we reject the signposts. I think I was so hungry to know what to do next. Yeah. Because I didn't yeah. know, I didn't know. Uh, and I had very beautiful people in my life that God had put there mm -hmm. who were artists who said, yeah. go this way, do this next, mm -hmm. do this next. They didn't have the whole picture, but they could right. just say, do this next. And I said, okay. And my mother was very supportive. So come on, let's go. Mm -hmm. She right. sat there with me at the audition, you know, and they, she would wait in the audition room and just, she waited with me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had all these beautiful teachers, dance yeah. teachers, theater teachers, I had teachers who I feel like secretly they understood that they were planting seeds. Mm -hmm. You know, because I feel like, I don't know if you got it too, Dawn. I would have these feelings in class where I would think, I don't know what they are talking about. I don't know. I don't understand. How am I going to do that? How can I do that? Mm. However, I believe that our teachers, whereas as a young person, I thought my success had to be inside of their classroom, right? That I had to accomplish it in the classroom yeah. that day. Okay. I, I think that those teachers, that the great teachers knew you're going to understand it one day. Right. Now their job is to plant the seed, right? And so when I'm, when I'm training my own students now and training them particularly for auditions, I say, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm 99% sure what they're looking for is good dirt. Oh, yes. Right? I Some understand. Who Can you explain people. that? Yeah, right. Well, someone who is teachable, someone mm -hmm. who is yielding, right? Dirt earth that is yielding, mm -hmm. not hard, dry, mm -hmm. rocky soil. 
but yeah. earth that says yes earth that receives the seed and the seed can rest in the darkness inside of it right and, and listen the darkness you be thinking nothing's happening mm. you think nothing's happening mm. inside of you you think nothing's changing I'm, i love gardening I used to, when I was a young gardener, a beginning, I should say, gardener, I used to think, dang, I put that in the ground like three weeks ago and it's just, it's just not doing anything. Mm -hmm. It's just there, it's not doing anything. I didn't know that what it was doing was not visible to my eyes, that, that the roots are going way down before mm -hmm. the plant can go way up. Right, the roots mm -hmm. are what start to do the work in the darkness. And I really believe that our best teachers, that mm -hmm. they don't have an expectation. I tell my students all the time now, when, when I can see their disappointment, their anger, mm -hmm. they don't get it. I say, I'm not interested in perfection at all. Right. What I'm interested in is mm -hmm. knowing you are doing the work. And I can tell if you're doing your work or not. Mm -hmm. That's all I care about. Are you doing the work? Right. The perfection, the beauty, the fabulousness. Right. That's later. So right. let's now, talk about your yeah. school. Let's talk about your school and how can anybody, if they want to train with you, come to work with you? So I, I teach uh, at the Youth Arts Academy, which is at the Billie Holiday Theater in Bedford-Stuyvesant, Brooklyn. And classes currently are still online. So okay. classes uh, on Zoom. And that has been surprisingly a blessing. It still works. You can still teach mm -hmm. so much, even if you're just doing it through the screen. I teach a class called Speak the Speech, which is a poetry class. Because I didn't have access to the children physically on stage, mm -hmm. I, um, I developed a curriculum to teach them using poetry as a doorway to drama. Okay. Yes, because poems are small stories. And all we're doing on stage as actors mm -hmm. is storytelling. So if you can work with a small microcosm of a play, which is mm -hmm. a poem, I can teach you how to use language. I can teach you how to use your voice so that one day when I have a chance to be on stage with them, then we'll just continue growing that um, into the body. Uh, so, um, so yes, you can sign up mm -hmm. as a young person. Um, I do it with students up and through, uh, high school. Okay. Uh, and it's just poet. It's just, it's just, um, speak the speech. It's a poetry class. Uh, and I expect that we will be virtual by the end of the year, God willing. I mean, not mm -hmm. virtual in person. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it'll become a full, uh, acting class. Okay. Uh, and I teach adult classes at the Freeman Studio. And you just go to freemanstudio.com and you can look up my mm -hmm. class and my classes are, are, the classes are intimate and they're also online. Okay. Uh, I, I teach a scene study class. So what we are learning is how do we read a play and how do we create work from the play scene by scene. So you have a scene partner, okay. you purse with your scene partner, and then mm -hmm. you bring the work into class. And what's wonderful about that is you only commit to four week cycles. You just have to commit to a four week mm -hmm. um, uh, opportunity. So it's not a big contract that you lock yourself into. You mm -hmm. just say, I want to see what this is like and you'll work on one play for four weeks, but you will have the opportunity to see the other actors in the class 
work as well. And, okay. and so that's also, you know, Dawn, we, we learn mm -hmm. as students, we learn as much Teaching. when our teachers <laughs> are, when our teachers are talking to other students. Oh, right. You that's know, how we were trained. Right, yes. the teacher sitting say, and waiting and listening. A, if I'm giving this student a that's note, right. I'm giving you the note too. That's right. Don't let me don't let me have to give you the same note I gave this. Student. Right, right, right. The, the note is for you. I'm not using your name <laughs> for you. <laughs> exactly. So that's. I mean, how long have you been doing that before we move on to? Because I know you so have to. I've go been doing that now for ten months, right? Um, because since COVID shut down. Okay. And. I didn't like, man. You love it, don't you? Though, don't so you love it? Really, yes, but but it has been a wonderful transformation. Mm -hmm. um, I'm enjoying teaching. It's a it's a thrill. It's a gift. I'm yes. so grateful. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, you can you can take classes with me at the Freeman Studio. So yes. that's possible. I might even sign up. For the adult yes, beginner right. class. I might. I said it on live. I oh, might, I right. might, I might. <laughs> Nervous. Okay, I know you have to go. So I'm gonna just a couple of more things. I know the audience wants to know about Tyler Perry. And what was that like working with Tyler Perry? Oh, um I'm I, I have a personal question. Why LA? Why New York versus LA? Why did you decide to stay here? And then after that, I'll let you go and then I'll ask you about what you're coming, what's coming up now. Sure. So, so um, Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry. I love Tyler very much. I think he's uh, he he was a gift for me. Um, working on his set was the first was my second time in all of my years. Uh, I think I intersected him after I had been in the business for I don't know 13, 14 years. Okay, well seasoned actress at this point. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, it, it was though, like he was the second uh, set where the people who are the head mm -hmm. love the Lord. Okay. So that was an interesting experience because mm -hmm. you. Uh, I, you know, I, I'd be, especially in my younger um, experience as a theater artist, I really didn't know how to talk about my walk with God. And I think that was more about me just being young in walking sure. with God. Mm -hmm. um, and so to be in a place where I was free to uh, being fully myself if you're going to talk to lisa you're going to end up talking about god it's not because i'm trying to tell you about god or anybody about god i just don't really have much to say if he's not in the middle of it because he is like i not anything i am anything that you appreciate any reason that you love me people perfect, mm -hmm. perfect strangers walk up to me and say oh, i love you can i have a hug right that's god yeah you don't you don't love me you don't know me you don't yeah. know me you know some of the work i've done mm -hmm. and and that brings you a feeling that oh, you know me and you want to mm -hmm. hug me and mm -hmm. i love that that's beautiful mm -hmm. but it is god um so tyler it, it, interesting things that happened on set um that moment in the, in the script, I will say, there were times when he had to pull me aside. So this oh. is one of those times. He had to pull me aside when we got to the day where my character has to slap her mother. Okay. And I, um, they, they had a coach trainer, a fight coach for us so that mm -hmm. he, they could teach us how to slap and be slapped in a way that would look convincing. So Lynn and I do all of that. Our coach is so satisfied. I mean, he's like, yes. Mm -hmm. But when I first started to work on the scene that day, she would say the line to me and I would just respond. Think what Tyler came up to me and said, you're thinking. 
I need you not to think. I need you to react. I need you to react, Lisa. And I said, but it's my mama, Tyler. Mm. He said, Lisa, you don't know how many people you're going to set free. Mm. I need you to just react. Wow. That brings tears to my eye. Oh, today is something else. That's what he said. You don't know how many women it you're is. going to set free. He said, I, when she says the words to you, I just want you to react. Mm -hmm. Don't think at all. Right. And I said, okay. Mm -hmm. I, said, <laughs> I really, I was like, I was just like, it just seems so. But it's because in my, in my earlier self, I hadn't come to a place where I accepted that within me, there is darkness and light okay. all the time, that I am both. Mm -hmm. In my earlier self, my younger self, yeah. I always only wanted to show the light. Okay. Mm -hmm. But as I live my life now, I realize, no, I was created darkness and light, all, mm -hmm. they coexist. Mm -hmm. And there are times when in my humanness, I will react. And in order to tell the truth in storytelling, we must embrace the darkness and the light that we possess as human beings. We can't help other people if we only look like light because they won't be able to relate to that Yeah, because it's not real. There isn't anybody who's only light. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're prominently light, but you have darkness too. And, and your darkness more than hateful, more than evil, is human. Yeah. So, you yeah. You preach, Miss Arundel. <laughs> so you went back and you gave this Miss Lynn. So what together. happens afterwards? Like, you get the ice pack, they, they cut, you get the ice pack. Oh, no, no, no. Everybody gets super excited. Our fight coast, especially. I think that guy was like Diesel. <laughs> I think we saw him jump up and down. I think he went, oh! <laughs> like, he, was like, yeah. Yeah. he was so happy. Because what they have to teach you is how to cross your hand. And what he taught me, this is a little movie secret, everybody. Yes. Is that I'm looking Ooh. for Lynn Whitfield's nose. Okay. Right in the center. This is here. I look for her nose. When she feels me crossing her nose, she has to move her body. Yes. So what happens is the way it's shot, this looks like I'm making contact when I'm making no contact, yes. zero yes. contact. It's not even, wow. it might be like this space, you right? But, but this is where she, she had to feel when Lisa's crossing your nose, that's when you have to throw yourself back in reaction mm -hmm. to the hit. And then the sound mm -hmm. engineer, Correct. much later, puts in the hit sound, the slap Well, sound. it was a scene that everyone remembers. And actually, I was watching it today. It's on like one of my TV stations. It's on. <laughs> so, and we're going to talk about all the work that you do. I Do you sing, Lisa? I always wanted to ask you that. <laughs> yes, I sing. Um, do it. <laughs> my, 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 um, my answer before used to be I sing all the time I just don't charge for it yeah <laughs> uh, okay. but I've had to learn because I've done plays where I have to sing and yeah. so even though that's not what I've been trained to do and that's not what I used to feel comfortable with I did a show where we did 40 songs oh my uh, gosh what show was that beautiful show, oh, beautiful show called Jubilee I did it at oh. Arena Stage, written by Taswell Thompson. It's a fantastic show, and it's about the Fisk Jubilee singer. So I played mm -hmm. a Fisk Jubilee singer, and we had to sing 
40 Negro spirituals. Wow. And my singing, our singing uh, coach, mm -hmm. he, one of my private lessons, he just looked at me and said, <laughs> we're going to put a note on the mirror and it's going to say, good morning, Lisa, you are mm -hmm. a singer. Okay. And so that's for you young people that it matters the kind of language you are talking to yourself with. You have to speak words of life and kindness and building up to yourself. And at the very least, notice when you're not. Notice when you're speaking words that are pulling you apart and that are diminishing who you are. Notice it, notice, mm -hmm. so that you can make a different choice. We can't choose differently if we don't know what we're doing. Uh, and it's not appropriate to speak unkindly to yourself. It's inappropriate. Can I piggyback on that with intimacy in the theater or film or TV? Choices that one has to make in a role that requires intimacy. Okay. What are your thoughts on that? And how do you steer a young artist? Uh, do I do certain roles or do I not? And what's the give and take of your choice? Are you understanding? I'm sorry. I'm trying to be so. Okay, what? so. What? 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 I'm what? just okay. Um, I'm so corny and like PG. So, you know, the roles when you're topless versus I'm not going to be topless. So the roles when there's things going on, like how, because in all your body of work, you have been blessed. I will say that you have integrity out of this world, okay? That's one of the things that I love about you. Um, not to say that other artists, you know, but it's a choice. So what advice would you give any young artist? Okay, um, yeah. um, sister, I'm getting concerned. Uh, let me, I need to plug myself in and I think that's gonna change my frame. So oh. I'm gonna ask, this. Okay, but well, while you're doing that, do you want me to go to the clip that we're doing that, uh, that you're doing for your new up and coming shows? Do you want me to go there? I'm good. I'm right here. I'm, I'm plugged okay. in now. Okay. That was scary, so, right? For a minute, you're like, I'm going to lose you. Yeah, I don't want, I don't want you to. Um, okay. So, okay. Intimacy. I've had to be intimate uh, just on a couple of occasions, I did a film um, called A Lesson Before Dying. And so Don Cheadle, who uh, oh, yes. worked co-stars in that HBO made for television movie, it was one, a really wonderful film. And it required us to be um, naked in bed. And so we weren't really naked, but yeah, you're still being- about that. Can we You're talk about that? Because some people yeah. don't realize that. How does that work? Right. Yeah, so, um, and, and now it's a whole, I think it's a whole department because of the world we're currently living in where people have given language to abuse and yes. to appropriate mm -hmm. uh, um, leveraging of one's position as yes. an actor, director, producer, um, that I know that they actually have a title now. I think it's intimacy coordinators. Okay. I, I think that's brand, I think that's fairly new. Mm -hmm. Um, so you're going to have these people on set with you as a way to protect everyone involved, yes. which is Love beautiful. It. But before they had those official people, I was blessed to have makeup artists or costumers that would be in the room and they would be watching the monitor to see what's seen and to also just be another presence in the room for me. Yeah. Because yeah. they generally clear the set when you have to be intimate. They don't want any extraneous workers mm -hmm. except mm -hmm. you know, who is absolutely necessary. But they would have the makeup artist or the, or the costumer there for mm -hmm. me. And 
they cut a piece of gauze, you know, so mm -hmm. that it's flesh colored and they um, adhere it to your breasts. Look so, at that, never knew that. Uh, so the camera, they angle the way they shot it and they can shoot it, how, they can shoot it however they want. Mm -hmm. Know that. Mm -hmm. if they, if, if they can shoot it however they want. So I, there's another thing I have to tell you too. But the, so the camera comes up and you see me sit up in bed looking at my lover who has gotten out of the bed. And so my entire back down to my beautiful waist is, is nude. So the impression you have of this human back is that on the other side of it, she's naked. Right. But my breasts are covered. And underneath I have on um, a little tiny piece of underwear too, but I'm wrapped up in the blanket. Right. And then the way they do it is that, you know, you get out of bed and I picked up my clothes and I was putting them on. So it's shot here, as a matter of fact, how this is being shot right now from my shoulder, from my uh, just shoulders up. So, mm -hmm. so you can see me putting on clothes. Again, the brain mm -hmm. of the audience mm -hmm. says she's nude and she's putting on her clothes. Right. So there is a way for you to be intimate without you being fully exposed. Yay. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. So again, it helped me. There's a lot of kids out there. I'm just, that's all I am right now. I'm a, yes. this is a teaching tool for young yes. artists. With I love that. No, but, but here is the thing. Good. You must be professional and clear before you say yes to the job that what you're willing to do and what you're not willing to do. And I have lost jobs because I said, I'm not doing that. It has happened. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I, I listen, integrity to me is everything. And I, I look, you are a brand. Your name is a brand and you've branded yourself extremely well that, I mean, I would recommend you for any project I would recommend my children to come see a show knowing that they're not gonna get anything but authenticity. Um, you're brilliant. Keep doing what you're doing, Lisa. You are a paid maker. Okay, quickly, I know you gotta go. Um, There's a no, no, but, I, but I wanna say that to the students, right? Like the young people say, hey, I see on page 17, it says that I have to be naked and I don't I'm not comfortable with that be honest because you do not want to be on the set hired already and coming right. and telling them what you're not going to do that's unprofessional it's and it's it's not okay because what happens is that they go oh we'll never we don't want to work with what they don't want to work with is anything that that's an obstacle so be mm -hmm. really clear in the beginning you know, mm -hmm. that's a good point. Has it ever happened that they say, well, we have a new director now, we're going in a new way and the new director now wants a new scene. And now you've already signed your contract saying that you're not gonna do it, but now that you're in production, the new producer's on and a director and they wanna go another way. What happens then? Oh, I'm not responsible for that. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, okay. Right? Okay, <laughs> like we're teaching. Says, Oh, I don't know what to tell you about that. Yeah, I'm not responsible for that. That now, Brooklyn comes out. That Brooklyn you can fire like, me if you want to. You can, you can fire me. But that's, again, that's something that you're going to, they'll, they'll bring on to themselves, yeah. right? But you know what you're willing to do. Mm -hmm. And there's, and, and what you always need to know too. This one's hard. This one you got to trust. Mm it costs money to change anything in okay. film. It costs them a lot of money mm -hmm. and they don't want to spend it on making yes. changes. So okay. mm -hmm. no, and, and you're here. So mm -hmm. firing you, yes, is a threat, sure. But the fact mm -hmm. is that's going to cost them time, Ooh. which is money. You understand? Yes. I love so that information. Don't, don't be ugly about it. Right. And don't tell them that it's going to cost that. Don't give them the information. <laughs> you just stand your ground. No, I'm not comfortable doing that. That's it. Mm -hmm. 
You don't have to worry about anything else. No, I'm You're not brilliant. comfortable with that. That's it. Thank you and for that. You gotta trust. Yeah, you just got to trust. It's hard. It's it's not easy. You've you saved feel like, so oh, many people know. just right now. You have saved so many people with that. With And that's the whole, I want to get back with that confidence. I want to talk to you about um, what I learned from you at a young age. And then we're going to go into what you're doing now. When I first met you, like we had class together in academics, but I had never been in an environment, a working environment. And I call that a working environment because you're right. What we were doing, we were working. And at one point, guys, the drama department and the dance department were required to come together and dance. I don't know if you remember that, but we had to take drama class and the drama students had to take dance class. So maybe if it was once a semester, whatever. So anyway, so that was my first introduction to you in the dance world. And when I tell you guys the shock on everyone's face, because I had no idea you were prepared. Like, we didn't know that you were like a dancer. Like, we said, oh, drama. Oh, okay. Oh, that's drama. But my girl was a drama dancer, <laughs> vocalist. Right, like she was everything, and we had no idea. So when you came in, you came in, Lisa. You sat with confidence in the front, and I would never forget this because I said, "Wow, I want like like just like first, it's not your class, the comedy of it, right? You're a guest in the class, but you didn't see it that way. You were like, I'm here to learn, like everyone else, right? <laughs> I'm in Leotard's heights, like everyone else." I know what I'm doing like anyone else. And I'm going to sit right here where I can absorb the most. And when I saw you and you'd said all that without saying all that. And that's when I said, wow. I said, this girl's going to make it. The confidence. And that's when it taught me I had to become more. Because I'm really shy. I am like, because dancers, a lot, we don't speak. We don't have to talk. We just communicate through our body. But it was at that moment when I saw this young lady with such confidence come into a room she had never been in before and sit with elegance and grace. Like, I'm here. I'm open. Teach me. I said, wow, I got I have to do better in terms of coming out of oh, my I, shell. And I thank you. And it stayed with I'm me. So like, I could cry. I'm so shocked. I don't remember. Shocked. I like I don't. We don't know how people perceive us. Right, like I don't, I don't remember, but I do. I was a dance student after school, right? So mm -hmm. it was like, oh yeah, I know right. what this is. Like, right, right. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna dance, but I didn't know that, Dawn. I so mm -hmm. appreciate that. Thank you. Look at the tear, like <laughs> to this yeah. day. So we really like we influence each other in so many ways, and we have no idea. Yeah. And yeah. all right, before I cry. Okay, so what are you working on now, Lisa? Let me go share my screen. Hold on. Oh. Let's do the um which one do you want to do first? Which one do you want oh. to talk about? First? Um, oh, I don't mind. Oh, so right now we just released one week ago today on BET Plus. Okay, you can that's go it. Seven day free trial to BET Plus to see the film called Favorite Son. Um, yeah, you can show them the clip. Okay, for here we go. Are you ready? Ladies, gentlemen, so gifted. He's amazing. I want to introduce you all to Royce London. Those are my sons, Blaine and Camden. You got more songs like that in your repertoire? Yes. yes. If you're ever in Atlanta, look me up. Thanks. I will. Well, yeah, well, you know, we're we going to reach out. In effect that today, so gifted would be the official praise team of the church. But we already have a minister of music. Things change. Hey, Royce, how are you? I'd love to bring you out here for a few months. God is going to perform some awesome miracles through this ministry. Camden Wilson, welcome to Atlanta. It's been a while since I felt connected to music the way that I did with yours. I gave you a shot. You need it for your music. You promised me, no matter what, that you would prioritize home first. Praise the Lord, both of our sons walking into their destinies. This whole time, you want to be the star, man. No, stop, no, 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 no,
and you are done here. I'll cut you off. Nothing I do is ever good enough for him. It doesn't even matter. God already chose your path. Everybody's gonna know your name. Tell us about this new show she's working on, 50 and 50. So Miss Lisa, let us know about this project. You can go to YouTube. It premiered last week. It's the fifth anniversary. And so it's 50 wonderful actors, females, doing 50 different writers, either poems or letters that, um, that the Billie Holiday brought together from all over the world. And uh, Indira Etwaru, Dr. Indira Etwaru, the artistic director, um, they put together this amazing show. You can watch it anytime you want. 50 and 50, okay. Shattering the Glass Ceiling. And here goes her little excerpt. To my daughter who never was, you were born in blood, drops dripped down my leg when they could not find your heartbeat, mine doubled. And I wonder, could you taste my doubts in the umbilical cord? Was that why you ran for your life? My daughter, there were so many words left unsaid, words like, I'm sorry, and forgive me. Words like, be brave enough to love fiercely knowing that your heart may break because in that trust is where God lives. No, you don't have to open your heart to open your legs. You don't have to open your legs to open your heart. But be sure the one you open yourself to is worthy of your light because in that light is where God dwells. Remember, only to say sorry if you've hurt someone and on the nights when your lover has left you and your girlfriend has betrayed you and your hair is tangled and you have not a single pair of clean underwear, remember, you are magic. Your curls touch the feet of your ancestors. Your toes rub the belly of Mother Earth. Speak your mind, speak your heart. Passive aggressiveness need not be in your vocabulary. And if aggressive you must be, then passive be damned. And if you ever need help with an ass kicking, I got you. When the world whispers insidious things into your ears, trust. You have never been broken, my dear. You have been held together by the smell of gumbo, by your sister's hands, by the crown of braids on your head. You are imperfect, and imperfection looks damn good on you. The blood you were born in beats in my heart, and I keep you there, my daughter. No, I will always love you. So Lisa, thank you so much for coming on this show. It's been an amazing journey. I know I took so much of your time. If anybody wants to contact you for privates or lectures or mentorship, how do they get in contact with you? Please go find me on Instagram. You can... And, um, DM me on Instagram. You can make your comment on Instagram and just let me know you're looking. But I told you, you can find adult classes at thefreemanstudio.com. And you can also um, find the children's class, although we're going to end for the summertime at the Youth Arts Academy at the Brook at the Billy Holiday Theater. Awesome. You're amazing, Ms. Lisa Arendelle. Thank, thank you, you so, so much for your time. Having me. I love you and I'm so grateful for you. Awesome. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye.